Hey everybody, my name's Heidi. I'm 23 years old and I actually traded bodies with my mom for 24 hours, which started as the worst day of my life, but turned into the best day of my life. It all started when my mom wanted to kick me out. Tough love, she called it. She had no empathy for me whatsoever. My whole life growing up, nothing was ever good enough. She pushed me through school when she knew I hated it and even threatened to kick me out if I didn't enroll in college. So I had to do that too. And now she's calling me lazy and making me get a job and kicking me out. She acts like she's such a big deal because she's a dentist, but she's a poor dentist. It's because she works for some kind of welfare clinic, so she pretty much works for free. Which, by the way, is like really selfish because she's not even thinking about me. All my friends always had the best of the best growing up, but not me. I loved hanging out with them in their luxury cars and big homes. But my mom didn't even hire a housekeeper. My girlfriends had it so much easier. Even my boyfriend, Chris, didn't have to work. He just had to manage his trust. I guess you could say my mom and I didn't have the best relationship. And her threats to kick me out weren't helping matters. Here's the deal, she said. You can live here as long as you're actively looking for a job, and as soon as you get said job, you need to move out. Totally unfair. I didn't even have a trust fund. I was hoping Chris would just propose, so I wouldn't have to deal with my mom telling me what to do. My mom forced me to update my resume, and then she made me hit the pavement and drop it off in person. She said I should be shaking hands and taking business cards. The job search was draining, and my heart wasn't in it. Most afternoons, I'd loiter around town, wasting time. One day, I wandered into this strange antique store with old photographs and camera equipment. There was this one old movie camera that looked like it was from the silent era or something. It still had film inside, but there was also this leather case. I picked it up and a booklet fell out. Inside was a warning. This isn't simply a camera, this is an experiment. Out of curiosity, I bought the camera that afternoon, took it home, and forgot about it. Until my mom started snooping around and dug it back out. We got into a big fight about my privacy. But oddly enough, that movie camera brought us together in more ways than one. My mom was fascinated. She said the film was over a hundred years old and we both wondered what was on it. We loaded the film in an old projector she had in the attic. It actually worked and we watched the strangest movie. It was called Body Swap Experiment. And it was starring these two women that looked just like us. I mean, exactly like us and it spooked us. The film made a prophecy that we would swap bodies for a period of 24 hours. It was a really freaky experience, and we weren't sure what to make of it, so we just laughed it off. The next day, I woke up in my own body, and so did my mom. We went about our usual routines. But that night, my mom was nudging me to practice using the camera. She was pressuring me to somehow turn it into a job or something. She bought film and loaded it in the camera before interviewing me. So, tell me about your job hunt. What do you want to do? What do you want to be? It started to feel like an interrogation. So eventually I turned things around and started interviewing her. I asked her why she was so mean and why she wants to kick me out. I accused her of not even working herself. I bet she didn't do anything but boss her employees around like she bosses me around. My mom hated it when I stayed out all night. So I left just to tick her off. Chris was up for a good time and we stayed out super late, dancing the night away. But when I woke up, I was in my mom's bed. Her alarm was going off and I didn't know what happened and why I was in her room. Then I couldn't find her at all. When I went into my own room to fall back asleep, I almost had a heart attack. I saw myself asleep under the sheets. What was going on? Why did my back hurt so much? And then I looked down at my hands and realized they weren't mine. I went to the mirror and I saw my mom staring back at me. OMG, this was like a legit nightmare. I totally turned into my mom and my mom was me. I suddenly remembered the warning. This isn't just a camera, it's an experiment. I woke my mom up immediately and when she saw herself, she screamed. I told her everything. 
The movie said we would swap bodies for 24 hours, so we only had to get through a day. Let's just sleep the day away. But my mom said there was no way she could miss work. And then we started arguing again. I told her that she barely worked. And I was going to prove how easy it was to boss everybody around. But my mom said it was easy to find a job and said she'd have one by the end of the day. She had no idea what it was like and she made me furious. I left in a huff. It was weird having everybody suck up to me and call me Rhonda at the clinic. I was going to lock myself in my mom's office all day and snoop around. Then I'd treat myself to a long lunch. But I found all these letters from all these patients. They were thanking her and saying that she changed their lives. I barely looked around before there was a call on the phone. It was an on-call doc asking me to come to the exam room. He needed me to make a decision. It was about a homeless patient, Gus, who needed to have his tooth pulled. Or at least that's what the on-call doctor recommended. When I met Gus, he was pleading with me not to pull his front tooth. Without it, he was telling me how hard it could be to find a job. There was something about that moment that changed the way I saw my mother. In fact, I wished she had been there to help. But she wasn't, and everybody was looking at me. I tried to think what my mom might say, but I had no idea. And then I remembered some advice she gave me. She said that if a job is worth doing, it's worth doing right. I read through the articles, I reviewed his case, then I consulted with a different dentist. He said the tooth didn't need to get pulled if the patient was thoroughly treated for gum disease. I sat down with Gus and told him we were going to save his tooth, but he had to come back regularly. We did a deep cleaning and scheduled him for regular maintenance. And by the time we solved that problem, there was a new one. I was tired by lunch and a zombie by the end of the day. When I finally left, Gus was waiting for me. He had one wilted flower and a thank you note written on a napkin. It wasn't much, but he wanted me to know that I made a difference in his day. Inside, my heart was bursting and I felt fulfilled. Suddenly, the idea of surfing the internet all day seemed bleak in comparison. I couldn't wait to see my mom and tell her about the day. I thought she'd be so proud and I wanted to apologize for being such a brat. But then when I got home, she was nowhere to be found. I tried calling, but she didn't answer and she wasn't responding to texts either. I was beginning to get worried. I thought about how my mom must have felt all those times I danced the night away with Chris. I realized my mom was right. I couldn't just waste time and expect some rich guy to marry me. It wasn't realistic, and more, it wasn't fulfilling. That night, I started packing. I was going to move as soon as possible. Job or no job, I'd have to figure out my own life. But then my mom came home in my body, and she said she couldn't get me a job in a day, but she did get me an interview for a position as an assistant camera operator on this news program. I gave her a big hug. I told her about the day in her body and how good it felt to help others. The next morning, I woke up back in my usual body. I learned one of the most important lessons that day. You should always put your best foot forward. If you embark on a journey with gusto and inspiration, your steps will take you to all kinds of unexpected places. But if you loiter around, you may not go very far. My mom was proud of me, and we both learned a lot from the body swap experiment. We decided that it could be a powerful experience for others, and we gave the mysterious movie camera back to that old antique store for someone else to find. How can you give back to the world? Tell us about it in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe for more hidden wisdom stories. Remember, when you share our stories, you're sharing wisdom.